Hello everyone, this is, this is, welcome to Kevin Totemay's channel. Um, uh, I think you can understand by the title. Um, well, uh, I am officially back on YouTube and back with more videos. Whoa! Uh, first off, I really do want to apologize for, um, not being on YouTube for quite a long time been really busy with academics and schoolwork for the past four to five months. But now I am really glad to be back doing what I love to do. And there will be more videos, there will be more videos on mathematical topics. So any t uh, mathematical principles and topics you guys would like me to learn, um, that would be great. I have a whole lot of things planned for my channel, including these um, funny reaction videos. Um, so today's movie, today we're going to be looking at a movie that has gotten quite a lot of hate recently. Well, not recently, uh, let's just say for quite a long time. And that movie is the third installment in Sam Raimi's um, trilogy. Spider-Man 3, yeah, this movie just had so much potential, just so much potential, but man, they screwed it up so much, I don't know where it went wrong, was it the many subplots, the lousy script, the acting, I mean, why did Spider-Man 3 fail? Whoa. Well, we're going to be looking at that today, as this is Kevin's reacts to Unusual Sex Mix review of the infamous Spider-Man 3. Oh, boy. But to be honest, I didn't think Spider-Man 3 is that bad of a movie. I mean, it's flawed, it does have issues, but... I still found a passable conclusion, even though it should have been so much more. But, yeah, Spider-Man 3 isn't that great, and we're going to be seeing its full disappointment here today. And let's start the video in, in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's begin. I'm just glad everything is back to normal. Yo, dork. I'm not sure what that show is. You yeah, know I just think yeah. it's reported to have cost to make. Mm -hmm. Three hundred and fifty million dollars. That is one mouth watering sum of money, isn't it? <gasps> money. Yep. Uh. Ew. Wait, hold. Wait, hold on. I got to put the speakers up a little bit. Hopefully you guys can hear the video and me. Ah, now to put things into perspective for you, that production cost makes Spider-Man 3 the most expensive movie ever made. Wow. Well, okay, I should clarify. How much Spider-Man 3 costs to make is up for debate. A quick look on Wikipedia will tell you that films like Tangled and the third Pirates of the Caribbean film had higher production costs with Spider-Man 3's official cost coming to $258 million. But the $350 million figure is what industry insiders purport what the film's budget must have come to. They say this because for its time, the CGI in Spider-Man 3 was pretty damn revolutionary, and thus cost a pretty penny to put still holds up pretty well. And permission for shooting in New York City was said to cost the filmmakers, wait for it. One million dollars. What? A day. What? And it's because of that some experts believe the budget could have been as high as half a billion dollars. Sam Raimi must be loaded. Well, he's got all the money in the world, but there's one thing he can't buy. What's that? A dinosaur. So, with all that money and all his talent brought together to film a hotly anticipated third parter, what could possibly go wrong? Oh yeah, the fans fucking hated it. Yeah. I mean, Spider-Man 2 was loved by both audiences and critics alike. It was a tough act to follow. 
And whilst critical reception for Spider-Man 3 was decent, and the film still grossed a shit ton of money, audience backlash was just relentless. Hell, Empire Magazine listed Spider-Man 3 as the 50th worst movie ever made. I didn't think it was Okay, bad. I don't care how much you hate this movie, it's uh, not don't that attack me. bad. If you know me, you know I actually like Spider-Man 3. It's got some amazing action, some mm -hmm. genuinely funny moments, and the pacing is That's great too. Quality, but I'd but... be lying if I said there wasn't certain elements that bogged this three-part down. So let's take a gander at the film and see what rubbed people the wrong way. This is Spider-Man 3. Oh boy. So the third movie begins with, once again, a monologue from your friendly neighborhood Avengers reject. And as it turns <laughs> out, Pete's doing pretty well. He's getting a class, he's financially stable, and everyone thinks Spider-Man is the new messiah. Life is good. From the form of this matrix, we can see... Miss Stacy? Oh, I forgot that Bryce That only Dallas M powers. equals zero quantum states are affected. Uh, <laughs> no. Sorry, For sorry, gosh, you can't pull up that dialogue and honestly sound like you know what you're talking about. The way you said that line it honestly sounded like you were reading off that chalkboard there. That only the M equals zero quantum states are affected. Correct. <laughs> Good work, Miss Stacy. His mother, too. Okay, I'm sorry, that's unfair on Bryce Dallas Howard, the actress playing her. But after seeing Emma Stone's excellent portrayal of Gwen Stacy in The Amazing Spider Man, the Spider-Man 3 version really just comes across as a dumbass. Just an annoying giddy schoolgirl who feels the need to laugh awkwardly at every little thing being said. <laughs> okay, that's a little too much of that. Fuck you! Jeez, but enough of Gwen, let's go back to Peter gloating about how great his life is. And I'm in love with the girl of my dreams. Damn, MJ, you really let yourself go. Yeah. Actually, no, MJ's got herself a leading role in a new play on Broadway as Peter takes his seat in the front row for her first performance. They say that falling in love is wonderful. It's wonderful. Huh? So they say. It's my girlfriend. Okay, okay, fine, good for you. Just please don't lip sync again. It's wonderful. Oh, oh God. <laughs> it's wonderful. Take the shot. So they tell me. <laughs> that would be good. Oh, come on, on. sit back and enjoy the show. You said it. I. Look at them run. So <laughs> MJ finishes her. Jesus One and Christ. a half minute performance. So her and Peter head to Central Park push her for a romantic night out. Whilst there, a mysterious black substance falls out of the sky and attaches itself oh, to Peter's bike. Oh, the symbiote. What's that you say? Yeah. What is the black goo? Where did it come from? Why did it, it cross Earth they in such a coincidental it. manner? Damn. Fuck if I know, it's never explained. Yeah. Man, this yeah. has to be the laziest plot device in cinematic history. Yeah. It just falls out of the sky and we're expected to go along with yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, need you guys some know sort what of I mean. explanation as to where it came from. Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah, you, it, now it you guys know what I mean happened. when I talk about Surely they'll the give an explanation later movie. on in the movie, yeah, right? Yes, it is. Now, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, never explained. My guess is that they were going to get Jameson's son exposed to it somehow. I hear that's how it went down in other forms of Spider Man media. But Sam Raimi definitely seemed more keen to have other villains on show instead. And he was under a lot of pressure from studio executives to include Venom in this film. And as a result, he must have just yeah. lazily written him in. Yeah. If that's the case, it kind of makes you wonder how the writing process went for this scene. So Peter and MJ start bonking in Central Park when the symbiote falls out of the sky. It fell out of the sky because... Yeah, the script is really lazy. Ugh. Ah, Samuel Marshall, Remy, you're a genius! Impressive. So we come to a scene which appears the heck out of nowhere as an escaped prison convict called Flint Marco is on the run. Turns out Flint has a daughter who's suffering from a severe case of... Oh, yeah. Um, dying. This is one of the many sub... There's a they lot don't explain her condition very well. And um, by that, I mean not at all. Well, anyway, Flint's wife comes in and she's mm -hmm. not exactly happy to see him. I live in the presence of great truth. And that is the truth that you left behind, right there in that bedroom. Yes, I am very protective of my sick daughter. 
just ignore the fact that we live in a really seedy neighbourhood and I kept the window to a room unlocked so just about anyone can get in. Wow. Yep, there's a picture next to idiot in the dictionary. And what's that? <laughs> oh, you think I just photoshopped that image off for the sake of a cheap joke? Yeah. Well, I can like... prove to you that this dictionary is indeed valid. If we cut to W, we can see... Yep, there's David Cameron's picture next to the word wanker. It's surprisingly <laughs> accurate. Patty. I missed you. I miss you too, Daddy. And I kid you not, folks, this scene is the one and only time we see this girl. Yeah, you're probably wondering if Marco does get the money and saves her daughter, but no, never resolved. Yeah, but we know she's that, as good as dead. That's what I'm saying. There's too many stuff. <laughs> okay. Of all the okay, okay. Yeah. Like how he said, yeah, just like I was saying, there's just too many, there's just too much going on in the script that we just don't have time to digest everything that's just being presented to us. It's just a cluttered mess, just like other superhero movies like Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. Even the Amazing Spider-Man movies suffer from this problem, but they made it even worse by having finalization in those two movies. Whew, that's gonna be a rough one when I get to those two. Whew, those two Amazing Spider-Man movies. I personally found them pretty bad. Souls I have encountered in my travels. Hers was the most forgettable. What was the girl's name again? Was it Nickel Dime? Penny. P penny. That Penny. That's the one. Yeah. Ah, oh, thank you, Penny. Hey, I, I got you something too, actually. Oh, what? They call it an organ donor card. Have a Wait, feeling it'll come in handy very soon. What? So Flint goes off to get the money to keep a penny okay. as we cut to Peter <laughs> paying a visit to Aunt May. At night. What? Strange time to visit an OAP. She should be asleep by this hour. Yeah, well, for her. Well, he's not yeah. talking about MJ again. It's MJ. <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> mate. Go back to sleep. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> I'm gonna ask her to marry me. <sighs> <laughs> You're looping <me. laughs> Why do I find so much enjoyment in this? So, yeah, turns out Pete's planning to pop the question to MJ, as Aunt May's got some advice. A man has to be understanding and put his wife before himself. Can you do that, Peter? Oh, oh, this gives me a good opportunity to use my new lie detector. Yeah, I think I can. Fucking hell! So Peter heads home, and his spidey sense must be on vacation or something, as Harry attacks him whilst riding a neon lit flying surfboard. Which sounds stupid, but let's be honest, we would all fucking buy one. If not for the thrill of reacting that scene from Back to the Future 2, oh, I pretend he were playing a real life modern day too. version of Tony Hawk's skateboarding. <laughs> So we wow. can have pretty damn good chasing between Peter and Harry Yeah, Harriet. the fight scenes are still really well done. Except for this part. Oh. oh. <laughs> and after what really should have crushed his head, Peter yeah, heads down and takes him. him to the hospital. Meanwhile, we'll cut back to Flint, who's garnered some unwanted attention from the cops. So he flees into some kind of testing facility, only to get trapped in some kind of scientific experiment. But this scene raises a few questions. Firstly, oh, why the hell is this scene. facility oh, so easy to get into? Oh. Flynn climbs like one fence is and he's this in. Infamous scene. Uh, that was easy. Secondly, yeah, yeah. why don't the cops just shoot him through the fence? Yeah, there's well, holes through the fence. Through yeah. them, you know. Uh, Angry Joe learned that the hard way. Yeah. Let's show you! The bullets are just going to the wall! <laughs> Thirdly, what when Flynn falls into that? the sand pit, why do these doctors assume it's a bird that fell in? There's a change in the silicon mass. Yeah, it's probably a bird. It'll fly away when we fire it up. Oh, yeah, because a 190 pound man can be so easily mistaken for a tiny little bird. <sighs> Idiots. And lastly, when Flynn does transform into the Sandman, why does everything but his locket turn into sand? 
Yeah, you see, four big gaping problems wrong with this scene alone. Yeah, the bigger the bigger question is, why would these scientists just assume it's a bird on their facility without even without even checking all without even previewing all the variables before conducting the experiment to begin with? You know, for scientists, these are really terrible at their occupation. As someone who's always been interested in science, that's not how that's not how you that's not how you conduct experiments very thoroughly. There's a lot of stupid mo a lot of uh, stupid scenes in this movie. I remember. Oh, Was this script even proofread? <laughs> well, you see, know. Remy, in your head is a little thing called a brain. Use it. Well, okay, maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Remy certainly knows how to direct, at least. The scene where Flint rises from the sand is very well done. This somber tune, the amazing CGI, mm -hmm. it's a pretty damn powerful scene. It's just yeah. a shame that this is the only time in the movie where you feel genuinely sorry for the guy. I was pondering for a while as to why I felt this way, and mm -hmm. I think it might have something to do with the fact that he looks nothing like Thomas Aiden Church here. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm sure he's a nice guy and everything, but he certainly doesn't have a face which screams emotion, does he? You know what? I'm happy. <laughs> Besides, you know who I would love yeah, to have seen playing you know Sandman? Yeah. Anakin Skywalker. Why? I don't like sand. That'd be so fucking funny. So yeah, we come back to Peter at the okay. hospital as he's waiting for news on Harry. How is he? He's gotta be okay. But there's been some memory impairment, particularly short-term memory. Oh, oh God, you no. Know. <laughs> well, no, not the amnesia. Anything that happened to him recently. You're not seriously going down the amnesia route, are you? No. I don't remember much of anything. Oh, oh fuck donkeys! Oh. You're actually using what is quite possibly the cheapest plot thread that it's exists in cinematic amazing. history? Don't. You don't do that, you hairy dickweeds! Yeah, this is why? a kind of trope you'd see in a video why? game or a fucking soap opera, not a $350 million Hollywood blockbuster! Besides, you have all this character progression that Spider-Man 2 gave Harry as he searched for his father's killer and now we came to the realisation that his best friend might have been involved in his death. Might as well throw out the fucking window now! What?! <laughs> so yeah, Harry has amnesia, and since he's completely forgotten about Spider-Man's involvement with his father's death, the two are now best of buddies again. Oh, goody. Last thing I remember, I was fine. Somewhere. You're still fine. We love you, Harry. Oh. Why am I reminded of another film here? Can't quite put your finger on what movie I'm talking about. Maybe this will help. Feels like... Wait, what? Somehow I've been gone for a really long time. What? Now I'm back home. I don't know. Home. Is this, uh... In your role here. What? And I'm never gonna leave here ever, ever again. What? Oh, Adi M. This movie script is fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's I pretty dark. Like yeah, the script is really... Just a mess. Thank you. Uh, maybe just a few more pets. Well, you vaporized an outside contractor. That's your first strike. Well, tech. And yeah, the cheesy dialogue doesn't stop there. You have lovely friends. My best friends. I'd give my life for them. Oh. Wow, Remy. Subtle. Yeah, give that, that was a good fucking cock in it. He only yeah, just spoiled his own damn movie. Why not put a timer right in his fucking forehead while she ran out. I don't think that <laughs> <key> was obvious <laughs> enough. You bastard. You stupid, stupid bastard. You stupid, stupid bastard. Stupid bastard ass. You stupid ass. <laughs> Bullock bastard. Nipple wank turd. So, yeah, whilst we all okay. take bets on how long Harry has left to live in this movie, MJ goes to see Peter and she's got some bad news. The review. Oh. They hated it. They hated me. Uh, are they reviews of the play you were in or this movie? Mm, Miss both. Watson is I would say girl. both. Easy on the eyes, but not on the ears. Her small voice didn't carry past the first row. Hey, 
One player were they listening to? You sounded perfect. No, literally. She was pitch fucking perfect. Yeah. Kirsten Dunn's performance was pre-recorded, but if you wanted to get the point across that she wasn't very good, at least make the performance sound a little flat. The way those critics are talking about her, she might as well gone out sounding like this. I can't recall who said <laughs> it. I know. I never read it. I only know they told me that mum is grand. It's my girlfriend. It's about my career. I know, and I'm just saying you can't let it you can't let it bring you down. You just gotta believe in yourself and you pull yourself together, you get right back on the horse. And Don't give me the horse thing. Don't give me the horse uh. thing. <laughs> it's funny. It's what us Brits have to say now every time we buy meat. But see okay, suspect. Uh, can I say something about this scene? I think I know you were going to say, but I just want to say uh, something if that's okay. Um, this scene right here, there is so much wrong with it. One, like Unusual Suspect said, what are those reviewers or critics talking about? She sounded really, really well. Two, and this is a big two, how, why is MJ being so selfish and being stuck up? Why is she being so jerky? I mean, seriously, he's trying to compare his life as Spider-Man, how he's received by the press, to how, he, how you are in your acting career currently. He wasn't being selfish at all. I seriously don't understand. I know that they're trying to. I know that they're trying to make Peter sound like a jerk, but he still sounds. He still is very lovable for the most part, and but the way they word it, it just makes MJ, MJ just. It just looks. It just makes Mary Jane just look very condescending. And again, she just. She's acting really, really jerky in this scene. Throughout this whole movie, actually, again, there's a lot of stupid moments that do not make sense in this really bloated movie and disappoint. Seriously, am I the only one who thinks MJ's acting like a right stuck-up bitch? I know Peter might not be offering yeah, much in the way of emotional said. support, but his heart's in the right place. Yeah. He's saying he'll never yeah. give in, don't listen to the haters, and she's just throwing it right back in his face. Don't give me the horse thing. Try and understand how I feel. Wow, okay. that's jerky. I'll play along, MJ. I'm willing to bet that you feel a bit... <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Tell me I'm close. Disclaimer, this is a joke. Know that in real life, if you want to talk to me about your bad day, I will listen, offer emotional support, and help you in any way I can. I will not shoot your head off with a 9mm handgun. <clears throat> That's good. But Peter's saved by the bell <laughs> there's a little problem of an out of control crane in the city. We cut what to quite possibly the most stereotypical photographer of you'll going ever see. <laughs> Okay, Gwen, I've got a secret. It's my and why is Gwen a Yeah, I've got a secret too. It's called my middle finger. Yeah, it only directed up with a sun dot shine. Well, thankfully, the crane seems to choose listed cast members as it spreads. It crashes into Gwen's photo shoot. Sorry, you've been disconnected. Oh, wow. Bit unusual to see a girl hitting the movie that hard. Mm -hmm. Can I see it again? Oh, come <laughs> on. The loop. Come on, suspect. <laughs> Gone everyone to hell. Disclaimer, yeah. I'm playing a character. I'm a big advocate of women's rights and I have nothing but respect for the ladies. I do not get off watching women repeal to get hit in the face with an office desk. He's just a great big jerk. But Spidey arrives ah. just in time to make a daring rescue in a pretty damn awesome sequence of Spidey dodging the debris to catch Gwen. Thank God you're okay. Daddy! Hey, I'm the new guy. New guy? Oh, now on, no. I am going to be taking oh. shots at you for the bugle. So yeah, playing uh, Eddie Brock in this so movie is one tough of grace. Now, this is a very strange casting uh, decision, but then again, everyone said the same thing, thing, thing about Heath Ledger as the Joker, so... I'm keeping an upper mind on this. He, he might just surprise me. Oh. He's busy. Oh, no, I'm just here to talk to you, beautiful. I changed my mind, he's spawn of Satan. What's that smell? That's a little something called nice and easy. Y'all using a lady's head eye product? What's that? <laughs> it's called go away. Oh, wow, what a coincidence. I'm wearing that too. <laughs> Kindly fuck off. So Peter arrives shortly after as Jameson decides to use Eddie's photo of Spidey instead. 
Congratulations, son. We'll use your shot. I'll pay you 50 bucks. All right, JJ. I'm your man. I know more about what makes a good picture than any photographer in this town. See, photography, it's not just about, no offense, uh, flagpoles or <laughs> whatever. It's about lighting, composition, drama. <laughs> yeah, and just two days ago, I found that taking off the lens cap helps immensely. <laughs> I went to public to see Spider-Man for the two-bit criminal he really is. He's a fake. He's full of stick'em. Catch him in the act. Spider-Man with his hand in a cookie jar. You know, Jameson is confusing me here. He wants to portray Spider-Man as a villain, yet he just paid 50 bucks to publish a picture of him saving a woman's life. What's his bloody headline gonna be? Spider-Man saves lives, thus solely responsible for overpopulation? That bastard. I'm on it, boss. <laughs> so yeah, Eddie and Peter are sent off to get a photo of Spidey doing an evil deed. Well, I don't know about an evil deed, but this photo would not help his public image at all. Well, anyway, yeah. we cut to MJ, who's sadly been laid off from her job at Broadway. As Peter attends a big celebratory event for Spider-Man, at the same time, Sandman is roaming the streets. What? Man, hate to think what it's like for him when he takes a piss. What? It's gonna burn. But the hey, police is he hangs out in a conveniently Ew. placed truck full of sand. Oh, this scene where the police okay, officer. Okay, slow, we need easy, does it? Don't worry, it's not as if this guy this has the ability to make a giant so I sat down with semi flying several feet into like, the air, most likely breaking my back to leave me in the hospital for several weeks. <laughs> Three, <laughs> that two, just be one. <laughs> <laughs> so Flynn flies off as the ceremony gets on the way. Who is it that breaks your fall, puts out the flames, and saves your children? They love me. They love you. What? I think borderline obsessive would be a better description. Don't believe me? Take a look at this woman. Oh, so yeah, that instead guy. of trying to hide his identity and protect the ones he loves, Peter's now making public appearances with huge crowds of photographers, brass bands, the works. This is sounding a little too familiar to another universal oh. hit superhero <laughs> no. film, isn't it? <laughs> oh, and yeah, to make matters is... worse, not only is Spider-Man making public appearances, he's also making public smooches as he kisses Gwen for the crowd. Oh, and not like a peck on the cheek or anything, no, a full-on snog. Right when MJ is watching as well. Um, Peter, unless MJ practices polygamy, I don't think that was a wise move. But Sandman turns up because it looks like he took a wrong turn at Albuquerque, so Peter gives chase. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> and that's not all I can enlarge, ladies. Disclaimer. Hey, don't have sex with men whose molecular structure is entirely made of sand. Okay. Insertion will be a painful process and is likely will get an infection. Yeah. Uh, it gets kind of itchy. So after a fight between the two, Sandman <laughs> distracts Spidey as Flint gets away. We then cut to Peter arriving at a restaurant where he plans to propose to MJ. Okay. So, oh, would you like some champagne? Oh, no, I forgot how creepy this scene is. I'll back it in there. <laughs> oh, don't cry. Oh, don't cry. Oh. Wow, what an ass! So MJ arrives, and I have to admit, Bruce Campbell here as a French major D does get in a chuckle or two, but he's overshadowed by Peter, who for some reason has all of a sudden started acting like a complete asshole. Get this, MJ is obviously not doing well, so Peter tries to give advice on how to cope with the stresses of being famous. Oh, yeah, because it worked so well the first time. I see Spider-Man posters in the window. The kids running around with me on their sweaters. It's a big Halloween item. Uh, you do know you're supposed to be telling MJ the bad side of being Spider-Man, right? I don't know. I guess I've become something of an icon. Like yesterday. They kept screaming, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. People adore and worship me like a god, MJ. I know exactly how you feel. And just when you thought things couldn't get any worse for Peter... Hi, Peter. Hi. <laughs> of all the restaurants and all the cities in all of America, she had to walk into this one. <laughs> Sam, the script is fucking horrible. Uh, Can I use yeah. your Fault 45? This Thank script you. is a mess. Yeah, that's appropriate. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> she's in my science class. It's not her best subject. What? How come you never mentioned her? How come you haven't mentioned her? I think the bigger question is why did you stick your fucking tongue down her throat? She's just a girl in my class. Let me ask you something. When you kissed her, who was kissing her? Spider-Man or Peter? What do you mean? <sighs> okay, I refuse. <sighs> okay. I'm sorry if I keep going on and on, but still, you see what you see what's wrong with how the characters are portrayed in this movie. <sighs> Especially Peter and MJ's relationship, seeing how seeing how flanderized it is compared to the first two movies. The first two movies, they were honest progression about how they came honest with their feelings towards each other, how they will always be there for one another. And how both of them have very similar lifestyles, but still very opposite. Here in this movie, they're just having relation problems. When in the second movie, they promised that these, that being together with these two, will finally make these two happy. And this is the result? Look, Peter's being a jerk in this scene. And yes, it was dumb for him to kiss Gwen. But seriously, to go as far as to say, but Mary Jane, to go as far as to tell him that he's cheating... Really, that's really just watered down and wrong. It's like, seriously. Seriously, was this really what was needed in the third movie? This would be the final installment to the trilogy? I used to believe anybody can be this stupid. You just had a part-time model walk up to your table and gloat about how great a kiss you are when your girlfriend is sat right in fucking front of you! And you go... What do you mean? What the hell happened? I don't understand Peter acting like this if he had been in contact with a symbiote, but he hasn't yet. I'm actually siding with MJ here, and you all know how much I hated a character in the second movie. Where are you going? Please don't follow me. So MJ rightfully tells the idiot to piss it off, or worse to that effect, as Pete gets a call from Captain oh. Stacy. Apparently the man that we yeah. thought killed Uncle Ben wasn't the culprit. Oh, yeah, uh, apparently the real killer left this note, which I will now read. <clears throat> what does it say? There can only be one Uncle Ben. What? This is the man who killed your husband. <laughs> that bastard! <laughs> Alright, okay, it's actually Flint Marker. Hey, they needed to tie his character to Spidey somehow. As we Pete Bowers revenge and heads into his Uncle police Ben's radio so we can again. catch him. But that symbiote Why? decides it's time to attach itself to Peter. It makes his suit go black and he feels somewhat stronger. Though the added strength and agility is never really explored in the movie, which is a shame. Well anyway, Peter heads home and finds that Marco's just robbed a bank. So he dons his newly acquired suit and follows him into the subway. <laughs> Wait. So Sandman's weakness is water? Okay, well, first that was isn't the human body like 70% water? So isn't that like a weakness to yourself? And before you yeah. say, well, maybe he doesn't have any water left. Well, he visibly sheds tears in the movie, so that's obviously not right. And secondly, a weakness to water means that you're only going to be useful when it ain't raining. Damn. Good thing this movie wow. wasn't set in the UK. Yeah, It'll be only in two well, minutes. Rains, so yeah. Peter washes Flint away, thinking he's killed him, and decides it's time to enter emo mode. Uh, Leave me alone. No. Give me rent. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door. It's just a door, Pete. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door. And if Bill's door hangs on squeaky, <laughs> then may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> He is a good boy. I really love this guy. He must be in some kind of trouble. Wow. And you know something? I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. I was half expecting Mr. Dickovich to lose his shit there, but he totally surprised me. His character actually has dimension. You have a problem with the phone? No. He was really no, funny was just, in the second movie, too. I was trying to figure out what to say. If it's a woman you're calling, then you say, you're a good woman. I'm good man. <laughs> good God, it's so simple. Mr. Dickovich must be like a, a, a chick magnet. 
Tell us more, oh mighty sex lord. In Soviet Russia, girls fuck you. Right. So we come back to MJ, and because she can't go two seconds without a man in her life, she decides wow. to go up to Harry's place to make omelettes and do the twist. Wait, what? Wait, what? Just like Oh, this is really wasn't right? what I was expecting in a Spider-Man movie. Yeah. I mean, this is well ludicrous, yeah. Why would anyone really be entertained by watching MJ and Harry do the twist? Get back to the exciting action sequences yeah, where oh, they like to put on what the Jesus highlights. Kinda like how Jeremy Clarkson does in the intro to Top Gear. Oh, what? I'm not sure what that show is. Tonight, Harry makes an omelet. <laughs> MJ sits on a bench. <laughs> and Peter wears a jumper. <laughs> well, anyway, this. Harry ends up getting his memory back because, um,. Well, because, um... <laughs> oh, yeah, the script says so. You know what you must do. Make him suffer. Make him wish he, he were, were dead. dead. First, Her. we what? attack oh. his heart. <laughs> we'll get the bastard hook to McDonald's. His heart won't stand a chance. <laughs> but hey, I that's actually so hard than what Harry comes <laughs> up with. <laughs> Sorry, Instead of just sorry. killing Peter, he coerces MJ to break up with him. If she doesn't, then he'll kill him. <laughs> I have no idea what Harry's plan is here. It's not working. So MJ breaks off with Pete, so he meets up with Why? Harry later in a cafe. Your boyfriend and he is fine and guy and MJ is now supposedly dating. She was fired and she told you. Like, she how does Harry's me? plan make any sense? All Mary Jane has well, to do is just you tell him. I'm the other guy. Wait, what? Okay, okay, but seriously, when did Spider-Man 3 turn into a fucking soap opera? Uh, I don't oh, know. Wait, that was only when Harry got fucking amnesia! Can I warm you up? Yes, please. How's the pie? So good. So good. <laughs> I do remember okay, a lot not to be a conspiracy sorry, theorist or anything, but remember when I was making a joke about Willem Dafoe's threatening finger lick in the first Spider-Man movie, and how I connected that to KFC's finger licking good slogan? Well, Casey have recently changed that slogan to something else. How's that a guess as to what that is? So good. <laughs> I mean, is the Osborne family a generation down from Colonel Sanders or something? Help KFC celebrate 70 years. Get KFC, four free though. pieces of original recipe chicken with the purchase of any 10 piece meal or larger. So, so, G -double -O -D good. So good. <laughs> but Pizza Digivolves into Email Mom once again and goes to pay Harry a visit. What did you do to her? I did what you failed to do. Oh, the possibilities. Oh, man, this is where I wish I could just employ the cast of Whose Line Is It Anyway to help me with these reviews. This would be a great time to play the quick change game, wouldn't it? What did you do to her? I did what you failed to do. I was there for her. Change. I lasted longer than 30 seconds. Change. I actually made love to her without crying. Change. I didn't have to take eight vitamin pills to keep her happy. Change. I put it in the right hole. Change. I didn't switch her contraceptive pill with a roofie. Change. When she suggested we spoon her, I didn't open the cutlery drawer. Change. Okay, okay. I could seriously go all day, but I got a review to finish. She knows me very well. And when she kissed me, it was just like she used to kiss me. The taste. Strawberries. Ah, too late, Harry. Sean Bean already used that one in Golden Eye. Lovely girl. Tastes like. like strawberries. Besides, I had gone for something a bit more obvious. That taste. Lips. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Peter and Harry really have weird. a fight and crash into the Green Goblin Lab when Pete gets the upper hand by throwing one of Harry's pumpkin bombs back at him. How the hell this doesn't kill him, I really don't know, Ooh. seeing as how we saw these bombs disintegrate people in the first movie. Well, anyway, Pete then quickly finds out that Eddie faked a picture of Spider-Man robbing a bank so he can get the job of the bugle. So he exposes Eddie and he's swiftly fired. Peter then gets the job and proceeds to celebrate by, um, God, here we go. Um, oh, this part. 
Yeah. But, okay, this is going to sound really crazy, but I actually found Emo Peter Parker hilarious. Is it stupid? Yes. Definitely beyond stupid. It's really, really stupid and idiotic, but in my opinion, it makes sense because, you know, Peter is an uncool nerd who has never been cool in his life. And as someone who's been uncool, has, uh, has had that uncool, unpopular, nerdy guy type of, uh, that type of, um, position and reputation I've gained throughout my life, this honestly is relatable. Honestly, seriously, this scene makes total sense to Peter as a as a character. Though the jazz club scene is when things get really ridiculous. Really ridiculous. But again, Emo Peter Pocket, despite being stupid, it's it makes perfect sense. Again, I've always been the uncool nerd um reputation, so I sadly relate to this. <laughs> I can, but Peter, you are not cool enough to be using a James Brown track. In fact, I think you're only cool enough for one track and one track only. <clears throat> Never worry about a thing, got the world on a string, cause I've got the cure for all of my blues. I take a look at my enormous penis And my troubles start to melt away I take a look at my enormous penis And the happy times are coming to stay I gotta sing and I dance when I glance in my pants And the feeling's like a sunshiny day I take a look at my enormous penis And I so long to use that song. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna have to make a part two of this. <laughs> part two. <laughs>